Okay, on this tutorial, I have this um, TJ Hooker cut uh, down. And when I get to the end, I'm at 2417. That's not bad. Um, but there's something... Oh, it was right about... Was it here? There's some... Oh, here it is. There's something when I went playing back on it. Um, there's a little bit of a problem. And what it is is... Right there. Okay, something weird looks here. So I go back and examine. I said, oh, I'm missing the shot of the guy grabbing, the green coat guy grabbing his gun. And there's this weird frame like that, kind of half and half. So it's disruptive to the eye because I see a flash. So I want to fix this. I don't want to start over. How do I just take care of this little section right here at this splice? There's a problem. So here's the thing, when I hover my mouse right over the splice, which is the vertical line, notice that when I'm on one side, this the mouse keeps changing its icon. I see a red arrow, I see a yellow arrow, I see this white thing, and then I see this red thing and yellow thing. And what you realize, it's dependent on the position of the mouse in this frame. You can do it the picture or the sound, but in this case, I'm worrying dealing with just the picture track. And the answer to this, I'm going to zoom in here just a little bit so we can see this more clearly. And it's this edit right here. Okay, now to make these tracks bigger, you can see how I zoomed in. And it zooms in where the playhead is. But to make it taller, fatter, whatever you want to call it, whatever is the tracks are available here, I can make them larger by holding the command button down and then tap the L button multiple times, it makes it larger. To make it smaller or to collapse it, the letter next to L is K, and I can collapse it by holding the command button and tapping the K or the L. Okay, so that's another way of working. Okay, so now I'm gonna move my mouse cursor and it's either a red arrow when it's near the top of the frame, and when I get below the half line, it turns yellow. We'll get into those functions uh, probably in the next uh, project, but when I move closer to the splice, it also has a red, we call it rollers, or yellow roller. And then when I get right on top of it, it turns white, and I call that my white butterfly. Okay, so all these mean different things. So we'll learn about the red roller, yellow roller, and the white butterfly. So in this case, I'm going to click once on the splice, and those now have double uh, purple things on either side of the splice. And up here, the picture changed from the normal two windows to two windows with these little purple zeros underneath. This is what we call trim mode. And what we're seeing here is the last frame of the outgoing shot, the white shot, and we see the first frame of the next shot, which is this close-up or this medium shot of the guy with the shotgun. So what I want to do is I don't have enough of him. I want to put back some of the frames I have taken out. And by going earlier in the timeline, which is to the left, because we go from left to right, but I only want to change him. I don't want to change this shot. So I'm going to purposely click on his side with my mouse and notice I see a, the two purple things become one yellow thing on the right side. And those are only this one purple thing on the right side is lit up with zero. So now when I, I want to add more frames before this, I want to go left. And here's the arrows on here. Trim left 10, left 1, right 1, or right 10. So I'm going to click on left trim one at a time. And it is... As you can see on my timeline, it's extending the timeline and adding more frames till it gets back to where I was the shot before. Okay, I went too far. So I will go to the right now, maybe two frames there. Now to see how this works, because it's hard to, see, and the indicator shows that I went minus 11, so over a third of a second. Is that enough? So I hit the space bar, and when I hit the space bar, what's going to happen? is that the playhead will roll back two seconds before this edit. Then it will automatically play forward at real time, normal play time, past the edit so I can see it, and it will stop 
two seconds after that, that edit, and it will just keep repeating that until I am satisfied, and then I hit the spacebar to stop it. So here we go. This is called previewing a trim. Spacebar. Okay, I hit the space bar, stop, comes back. I think that's plenty. I'm gonna go two more later. Now it's nine. Can I get away with that? Space bar. Okay, I think I like it with the as much frames, the 11. I'll leave it at that. So you can adjust these however you want to do it. If I want to change the left side, I click on this side and the yellow line now it's on the left side. And let's say I want to go less on that. So I'm going earlier by four. Okay, so I like that too. So, okay, now that I'm done with this trimming, to get out of the trim mode, the easiest way I can, that I know of, is that the playhead, I want to move the playhead, and I forgot to mention this before. I can't just grab this blue line, move it left. I can, now I can hit the left arrow and it'll go left, but the way to move a playhead is to grab it up here in the number black column here. This is your time code bar. There's two of them up here and down here. So I can click here and just drag it. I can click down here and wherever I click this, it will jump to that portion. Clicking here doesn't do any good. Clicking here doesn't move the playhead. Only here in the number row is how you move the playhead other than using the space bar and all that. Using the mouse and trying to move it manually, you have, your mouse has to be up in the black numbers here, or the black bar with the white numbers, I should say. Okay, so let's fix the other problem. Okay, I still have that weird flash. I go back and there it is. This happens, we call it three, two pull down. It's a little complex because these shows were all shot in 35 millimeter film going at 24 frames per second, which is standard movie frame speed. Television is 30 frames. So to convert the 24 into 30, you have to repeat some fields. And that's what we're getting here. So I can edit that out. Here's the clean frame. I'm gonna mark it in, advance it two frames, mark it out, X, get rid of it. So now it's a little bit cleaner. Had me. Okay, so there you go. That works well for me. Now this whole undoing, let me just make a edit here. Okay, so let's just say I want get out right there, mark it in, and go right to here, pull it up, just check my duration. I'm at 24.14, good, well within the range. Now suppose I say, okay, suppose I want to undo that. Command Z will undo it. How many times can I undo it? There it is, undo, undo, Command Z, and I go back to here, Command Z, undo, and whoops. Okay, so I undid that thing. Can I redo it? I didn't mean to undo that much. So. This whole undo redo, where is that found? Up in the edit menu, and you have this undo redo list. Check this out. So it's kept track of, uh, I can't, I guess I can count this, but this many events in history, oops, sorry, that you have done. So there is a redo list at the top and undo list here. So I'm going to redo that extract. So the top one is the most recent one. Okay, so I'm going to redo, and there it is. It redid, and what I undid, and so it puts back that thing, okay? So that's what undo, redo. What is the shortcut? We know Command Z is undo, but a redo is uh, Command R. There it is, Command R. Okay, so if I... Command Z and undid that. Command R. 
we'll redo it. Uh, so that's the trimming functions. Okay, I'll stop here and we'll export next.